Oh, didn't see you there. What's going on, you guys? Welcome back to another Rugby Player Reacts to an American Football video. Well, not to and an American Football, but to American Football. In this video series, I've decided to go back to the very first round of the 2020 NFL Draft and pick my top 15 players, basically. All the running backs, all the best of the wide receivers, the best of the linemen, the best of the linebackers, and the best of the quarterbacks. So, today's video, we're continuing in the fashion that we have done. In the first two videos of this particular series, we looked at the second pick, which was Chase Young, and we looked at the third pick, which was Jeff Okuda. And believe it or not, both of those picks were from Ohio State, so I was very happy to see that. The first pick we've already looked at, um, we did a special on Joe Burrow about four months ago. So I probably picked about 10 or 15 athletes that I do want to do a bit of a special on. I want to research their story and also look at their college football highlights. Because it's no fun, you know, seeing these guys play American football for the very first time in the pros. You know, the longer I'm involved in the game of American football, the longer I'm a fan, the more I realize that college football is just absolutely sick. As a product, you know, the, the, the fact that you can follow a player through high school, through college, see them go to the combine, see them get drafted, see them play in the pros. I mean, that is probably as in-depth of, of, you know, following a career as you can get in, in the world of sport. And I absolutely love it. So with that being said, I firmly believe it's, it's my duty for my audience and to also myself to get my head around the story and the play of these top guys before they get to the pros. Not only that, guys, not only that, but obviously this content hopefully will bring in a few new viewers and we can continue the growth of the channel. But, but last but not least, the main thing about this video series, the main thing about every video that comes to my channel is the fact that it's fun. This channel is all about good vibes. This channel is about positivity. This channel is about me having fun. And if I wasn't having fun right now, there's no way in hell I'd be sitting here making this video. I'm already having fun. We haven't even looked at a player yet. But that's just me. So with that being said, sit back, relax. Take a sip of your coffee if you've got one. Take a sip of your, your bourbon. Take a sip of your, uh, your alcohol if you've got one. In fact, I, I know that a fair few people out there watch my videos whilst drunk. So I want to say cheers. And with that being said, Let's get into the fourth pick of the 2020 NFL Draft, Big Andrew Thomas. I've been up and working to the morning, yeah. Yeah, they've been sleeping now, I swear they storming, yeah. Yeah, and I swear I'm cooking like a foreman, foreman. Uh, and my foreman jumping like it's Jordan on my way. Broom, broom, tell him I'm my lane, I've been praying. Yeah, yeah, gotta say this thing, I'm the same. I don't need another person telling me. Now, I say big Andrew Thomas, but I'm, I'm actually not sure how big. And to be honest, I didn't really think I was going to look at Andrew Thomas, although I had to because there's two linemen that I focused on throughout the draft, and that is because I saw them at the Combine. And I'm led to believe that Andrew Thomas didn't compete at the Combine, so that's probably why I didn't see him. And I guess he might have been in the same position as that of Chase Young, who thought, you know what, I've already proved enough in college, I don't need to go to the Combine, I don't want to be a Combine athlete. I want to hit the field as a pro, ready to go. Or maybe he was just injured. We're about to find out. So as I type Andrew Thomas's name into Google, we've got his Wikipedia page. We've got the New York Times. Did he get drafted to the Jets or the Giants? It was the Giants. The inside story of how the Giants landed Andrew Thomas. Well, okay, we're definitely going to read that. Andrew Thomas Wikipedia, of course. And I want to look at Andrew Thomas's college football uh, statistics or profile on the Georgia t on the GeorgiaDogs.com website. It's about time we learn about the big man, Andrew Thomas. Just how big, you might ask? One meter ninety-six or six foot five, and one hundred and forty-three kilograms. That is three hundred and fifteen pounds. As an offensive tackle, I don't know if he's a left tackle or a right tackle, but if you're the quarterback or the running back behind that player. In fact, come to think of it, who's it going to be? It's going to be Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley. Well, all right then. Andrew Thomas, born January 22nd, 1999, is an American football offensive tackle for the New York Giants of the National Football League. He attended Pace Academy and the University of Georgia. Pace Academy is a K-12 college preparatory private school. College prep private school located at West Paces Ferry Road, the Buckhead area of Atlanta, Georgia. Pace has approximately 1,115 students. 
Andrew Thomas, born January 22nd, 1999. He's 21 years of age. He was born in Lithonia, Georgia. So he went to his local university, which is pretty sick. His high school career, he played at Pace Academy as part of the class of 2017. In that year, Thomas's coaches lauded his work ethic. Following his high school career, Thomas played at the Army All-American game. He committed to Georgia on July 10th, 2016, choosing the Bulldogs over offers from Alabama, Auburn, Florida, and others. So at that point, I'd say he's probably going to be at the height that he is now, but he's definitely not going to be at the weight that he is now. So, you know, seeing his size and weight now, it's, it's interesting to think, you know, pretty much exactly four years ago, July 10th, 2016, after finishing his high school career and committing to Georgia, I'm wondering how big he was. He definitely wouldn't have filled out so much because looking back at Chase Young, I was really surprised. He comes out of college at 6'5", 260. But I heard the commentator say that over the off season from his sophomore to junior year, he put on 20 pounds. So that means in his sophomore year, he was like 240. And I saw another picture of him when he pretty much just graduated high school, still 6'5", but 20 pounds less. So he went from 220 to 240 to 260. And I think I mentioned in that video, you know, coming into the NFL, give him another five years, he'll be at 280. 280! Wowee. Now, I don't know if this guy would be putting on much more weight. He'd probably be refining what he has. But let's continue. Thomas started every game at right tackle his true freshman season. So he ca Okay, so he went to Georgia. Interestingly enough, he went to Georgia over a few other schools. And do you think that was because he was guaranteed a start, even in his true freshman season? Maybe it was. So he started every game at right tackle, uh, earning him a freshman All-American accolade. Thomas switched to left tackle for his sophomore season. Okay, that's interesting. He injured his left ankle playing South Carolina and didn't play the following game against Middle Tennessee. During the next two games, Thomas worked his way back to full participation, though he was forced to wear a brace after re-injuring the ankle later in the season. So he had a couple of injuries. After helping to pave the way for 331 rushing yards against Kentucky, Thomas was named the SEC Offensive Lineman of the Week. He was named a first team All-American and to the first team All-SEC after the season. Thomas was also invited to the NCAA Elite Football Synopsium in the winter. Following his sophomore season, the program helped athletes prepare for the transition from college to the NFL. Before his junior season, Thomas projected out as a potential first round pick in the 2020 draft if he chose to leave Georgia after his junior year, which he clearly did. On December, on December 17th, 2019, which was exactly three and a half years after signing, Thomas announced that he would forgo his senior year and enter the 2020 NFL draft, thus also skipping the 2020 Sugar Bowl. And if I can look here, look at his awards. He's got a fair few awards during college. We've got his pre-draft measurables. So he did, he did go to the combine. I probably saw him, but I, I think I was paying too much attention to Mackay Becton and Tristan Wirfs. Thomas was selected in the first round with the fourth overall pick, which we knew. Six foot five and an eighth inches, 315 pounds, 143 kg. Arm length of 36 and an eighth of an inch. A hand size of 10 and a quarter of an inch. A 40 yard dash of 522, a 20-yard shuttle of 466, a three-cone drill of 758, a vertical jump of over 30 inches, and a broad jump of over 9 feet, with a bench press effort of 21 reps with 225 pounds. Now that is a big, big man. Running a 40-yard dash at 522, and also a 20-yard shuttle at 466, that means he's going to have you know, a, a, a bit of impressive lateral movement for his size. And with that being said, it's about time we looked at that, but first, his career highlights and awards. Two-time first team All-SEC player in 18 and 19. First team All-American in 18. Freshman All-American in 17, which we saw. Unanimous All-American in 2019. So what's the difference? Freshman All-American, first team All-American, unanimous All-American. Let me know in the comment section below. Um, and he got the Jacobs Blocking Trophy, which I've never heard of before, but it's, it is named after me. Um, the Jacobs Blocking Trophy is the name of several similar annual college football awards bestowed by a conference upon their best blocker. The awards are named in honour of William P. Jacobs, the founder and president of Presbyterian College from 1935 to 45. The trophies are awarded by his sons. Well, that's just cool. Okay, so that's his Wikipedia. You can't expect too much. Let's go to the Georgia... Oh, who's that? 
That looks familiar. That guy looks like um, Mr. From, who also looks like Mr. Carr. So we've got his Georgia football profile here. There he is. <laughs> Look at him. G'day, mate. I wonder what your GPA was. You're looking pretty dapper there. Okay, so we've got a bio here. It looks like it's pretty in-depth. Um, personal, high school, 17, 18, and 19. We've got his statistics. Do we have statistics? Is he going to have statistics? He must have made a couple of tackles at least. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know about stats, but we've definitely got some, uh, some photos here. We've got the 2017 freshman, 6'5", 320. So he's the same height. Uh, and then we've got the same photo, it seems, for the 2018 year. And the big man's getting closer to graduation, 2019. He's growing some facial hair. He's growing up in general. And now he's in the NFL. Uh, are we going to get some stats? Yes, we are. But it's not going to be easy. The last game of his freshman year against Alabama. Is he on the score sheet? Will he be on the score sheet? I'm not sure. What do we got? Oh, <laughs> what do we got here? Rugs, Rugs the third. Ah, look at this. Henry Ruggs the third, at eight minutes and 52 seconds into the third quarter, caught a six yard pass from Tua Tungavailoa <laughs> against Georgia. I'm not sure whether Andrew Thomas is going to have any statistics there, but what I did see was his full games played. Career participation statistics. Okay, 17, he played 15 games. They must have got into the postseason. 18, they played 13, and 19, they played 13. For a college football game total of 41. And last but not least, we've got the NewYorkGiants.com website. The inside story of how the Giants landed Andrew Thomas, the most coveted tackle in the NFL draft. And there he is. Yeah, ain't nobody gonna move him. Ain't nobody gonna move him. All right, let's have a read. Andrew Thomas sat on the white leather couch in his family's living room when the NFL draft began on Thursday night. His phone plugged into the charger. He waited for a buzz. His agent, John Thornton, six feet away for social distancing and wearing a black face mask, was frantic. He contacted people he knew around the league trying to figure out where Thomas, one of the top offensive linemen in the draft, was going to end up. Thornton had been through this before as a player when the Tennessee Titans picked him up in the second round in 1999. Around 8.45pm, Thomas's phone vibrated. The call was coming from New York area code. I was excited to get the call, Thomas said. It came like three minutes before the pick. Thornton knew what that could mean. The Giants, who were selecting fourth overall, were going to pick him after months of st sustained interest, but he was still sceptical. There's good reason. He had just watched a draft show detail a prank played on Rutgers alum Muhammad Sanu when a caller pretended to be an NFL team official on draft night in 2012. That's just horrible. That's evil. Even when Thomas was on the call with the Giants, Thornton wasn't convinced what he saw happening was actually happening. <laughs> There's obviously a delay on TV. I was sitting behind Andrew and a couple of people in the media texted me asking if he got the call and I said no. Then Andrew picked his phone up, I saw the New York number and I still wasn't sure. After we got off the call, even then I wasn't sure. I was still hoping it was actually the Giants on the other end of the line. Well, it was true. The Giants had selected Thomas, hoping he will keep second year quarterback Daniel Jones upright for the next decade while opening running lanes for franchise running back. Saquon Barkley. Thomas spoke with members of the Giants front office on the phone and eventually chatted with head coach Joe Judge, who Thornton said was really serious and told him to come to work and put the bullshit aside. According to ESPN Sal P, Judge told Thomas that when Thomas spoke to the media, Judge didn't want to hear any talk of Super Bowls. It was a no-nonsense call, Thornton said. NJ Advanced Media learned in recent weeks, at least eight teams had Thomas ranked as their top offensive tackle. So the Giants believed they had to grab him with the fourth pick. The Giants spent much of the last week frantically trying to trade down, according to multiple executives and a current general manager, but a market for the number four pick never developed. If the Giants believed Thomas would still be there after moving down, it might have been a mistake. The Browns, Colts, Dolphins, Chargers, Cardinals, Panthers had Thomas as a top tackle on their draft boards. This is a fucking long story. Sorry, guys. So how did the Giants get to the fourth pick of the draft, convinced that Thomas was the guy to help? It seems a courtship developed way back at the NFL Combine in February. So long before those anxious moments in his family's living room, Thomas packed his car and headed to Pensacola, FLA. That's where he met former Jets, Cowboys and Bengals offensive coach, offensive line coach Paul Alexander, who trained him for more than a year. With Alexander, Thomas went from a strong tackle in the nation's top college conference to the lineman the Giants couldn't wait to draft. And with that being said, guys, I am going to finish it there.
That was our first look, or our first read, of Andrew Thomas, uh, the 6'5", 315 pounder, who's just got drafted with the fourth pick to the New York Giants. And I can't wait to see it. I'm definitely going to see him in action because well, I'm definitely going to be watching Saquon Barkley in action. So, <laughs> literally, if he's lining up at left tackle, any run that Saquon Barkley gets behind him, we're going to see him. And that's sick. And I'll be doing a bit of a breakdown, having a look at who he blocks, having a look at Saquon Barkley's patience, jukes, spins, whatever happens. But in the meantime, guys, I hope you have a fantastic day. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And in the next one, we'll be looking at Andrew Thomas's highlights for the very first time. See you then. Peace out.